Hello everybody, good morning. This is Jake Lealchko. Folks, today is a very happy day. It is a victory for the Holy Eucharist. Today we scored a victory for the Holy Eucharist in our own parish at St. Joseph's. I'm, I came home from Mass today, this morning, as we traditionally do every day with my children. I came home to pick up the bulletin. Of course, this bulletin is issued every Sunday, but uh, for some reason I didn't get to pick it up last Sunday. So I was late in, in uh, being informed of a very beautiful development, beautiful news that, uh, that happened uh, just over this weekend. And what is that beautiful news? Our pastor, Father Mark Wagner, has finally, finally come out to campaign in favor of receiving Holy Communion in the tongue. This, as you might know, those of you who have been following me and uh, following the uh, videos I've been putting out and posts, you all know that this is something that I had been campaigning for and praying for, really, for many, many years now. And it is a... Uh, I'm happy to note that... Finally, uh, our pastor and our parish has come to understand and to realize that there is a better way, that there is a more reverent way of receiving our Lord in Holy Communion, and that is to receive Him in the tongue. And, and that's the traditional way. That has been the, the, the way that the church has been receiving our Lord and has promoted the reception of Holy Communion because that is the most reverent way. Don't get me wrong, it is not that the church does not allow receiving communion in the hand. Yes, it does. But let's go back to the history of it, which Father Mark uh, very carefully also notes in this bulletin um, um, post that he made. And what does he say here? For many centuries, communion was distributed only on the tongue until the early 1960s when this church law was disobeyed. In several European countries, particularly Holland. In response, Pope Paul VI did a survey and found that most of the world's bishops agreed with him that communion should be given only on the tongue. In other words, to keep the tradition. He only granted a special exception to the, gra to the general rule, which is called an indult, to some countries allowing communion in the hand on the condition that there would be complete avoidance of any cause for the faithful to be shot and any danger of irreverence towards the Eucharist. In some countries, at the Vatican and at the Vatican, communion in the hand is still not allowed. Very clearly, and thank you, Father Mark, for bringing it up and for enlightening your parishioners and then the faithful about the truth behind this practice, that it was occasioned by disobedience to the church law. And, but you see, the Pope is a father. The Pope and the church is a mother. And as a mother and a father, sometimes parents like, like us need to do some kind of an accommodation we need to bend a little backwards in order to, well, uh, avoid uh, um, uh, unintended consequences of uh, imposing uh, rules in a more uh, rigid way. So that is understandable on the part of the Pope. But remember and bear in mind that as good and obedient and, and, and faithful children of the church, we should always be. Uh, um, erring towards the side of more reverence, more respect, more dignity in accordance to our own situation vis-a-vis -vis the one we are receiving, who is God himself, hidden in that, in the species of bread and wine. There, hidden, as St. Thomas Aquinas says in the Adoro Te Devote, that beautiful prayer that St. Thomas Aquinas composed, there is hidden, okay, the, the divinity of our Lord. Not only His humanity is hidden, but the divinity, body, blood, soul, and divinity is also hidden in the Eucharist. If we have faith 
in the fact that the sacred host and the, and the wine uh, are indeed the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ upon consecration, then really the most reverent way of receiving our Lord would be on the tongue and to avoid as much as possible any contact with any other part of the body. So you see, w when we receive our Lord in our hands, which by the way, again, as I would clarify, is allowed by the church. Uh, uh, when we receive our Lord in the hand, particles of that host get in contact with our hands, with our fingers. Okay? What do we do with that afterwards? Do we just wipe it off and say, okay, done with those particles. You wipe it off on your shirt or wherever it is. <laughs> well, you, you just put our Lord in every other thing that you touched. Now, is that reverence? Is that according our Lord the dignity that he deserves? So, folks, uh, there's no question about the reception in the tongue being the most reverent way. So I really congratulate Father Mark and I congratulate the parish for finally um, uh, uh, promoting this practice again. And I would encourage all of you, all of you, um, read this bulletin article. Uh, you know, I don't want to dwell with it, on it anymore. Those of you from St. Joseph, pick up a copy of this. And those of you who are not from this parish, I mean, it's all a question of uh, asking yourselves, what is the more reverent way? What is the more respectful way? And ask yourselves, are you really worthy? You know, the priest's hands are consecrated for that very reason of holding the Eucharist. That's why, you know, in the, in the olden days, and there's another practice that has been lost among priests. After the consecration, they keep their thumbs and their uh, pointers together like this, their uh, forefingers together like this. You know, they don't separate them. Why? Because in order to precisely preserve the particles that were that, that stuck to those fingertips upon the consecration. And they keep it like that uh, all the way to the Eucharistic prayer, to the Our Father, all the way to the Agnus Day until they're distributing communion. Those fingertips are together. And they only get separated again when they wash their hands after uh, communion, when they start to purify the vessels and purify their hands. That's the only time that they let go of those fingers. And all because of the dignity that needs to be accorded to the sacred species, the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord in that host. What more us? Who, who, who are we <laughs> to, to be holding our Lord in our palms, in the palm of our hand and pick him up? I mean, it, there's always a better way. There's, all a, there's always a more reverent way. There's always a more respectful way. And the church has already told us what that way is in the tongue. So he goes directly into our bodies without any other part of our bodies touching him. And without risking the indignity he may suffer from all of those particles of the host getting spread around every which way. So folks, I encourage everybody, give thanks to God for this twist in our own parish. Give thanks, you especially from St. Joseph who are listening to me. Let us give plenty of thanks to our Lord for this particular grace that has finally dawned upon this parish. A realization that we are at the turning point that we better make... <laughs> Sorry, I'm pretty emotional at this point. We better make good what we are saying in our in our slogan, right? That's in St. Joseph. We evangelize God's people beginning with the Holy Eucharist. Let us show that respect, that reverence, that love, that faith in the Eucharist by receiving our Lord with devotion, with love, with reverence, with respect, with dignity. Beginning from receiving Him in our tongue. And you know what? Maybe there'll come a time. Let's push it a little forward. Receive him on the tongue and on your knees. On your knees. What more reverence, what more dignity can you give our Lord than that of receiving him down on your knees for those of you who are capable and able and strong enough 
be, to be on your knees. Receive him on your knees. On the tongue. And that way, you are giving all the due respect and reverence and dignity to Jesus Christ. Well, folks, I cannot be any happier than today. Let us give thanks to our Lord, to our Lady, for this very big grace. And let us give thanks to Father Mark. Those of you who are listening to me from St. Joseph's, let's give thanks to Father Mark for finally coming around and doing what's right. Bye. Have a good day.